here at your service. I have no idea what that was all about, but I'm here. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I just get really giddy. I get really excited. It's another math lesson. <laughs> yeah. Engage New York. Eureka! Oh, that sounds so good. I have to say it again. Eureka! All right. We're doing module six, lesson nine. Hey, we just completed one that was lesson eight. So we're going to continue on our thought process here with our learning target. It does say generate two number patterns from given rules, plot the points, and analyze the patterns. That sounds heavy duty. It sure does. Seems like a lot more than what we were doing before, Mr. Wara. Yes, it is. Well, at Generate, we're just going to create a couple of number patterns here from some rules that we've already done. We have plotted points already. We did analyze a little bit on the last video, and we will revisit our learning target to make sure we're doing our job. That's right, and that I'm doing my job, because if you recall the last video, Mr. <sighs> Mr. Ant was there doing some kind of private investigation. On, I don't know. It was pretty weird. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Woohoo, look at all this. Hey, this looks pretty. It's awful pretty. Yeah, look here. We have line L. Okay. Now it says Y is two more than X. So when X is one, what is the Y coordinate if I apply the rule? Pretty easy, huh? Then if X is one, well, Y must be three because three is two more than one. <laughs> yeah, boy, Mr. Warren, you do know your simple addition facts. Why, thank you very much. Yes, and I just have to add the 2 to the 1 to get the 3. That's really all I did. So let's go ahead and start that off with our points. So my coordinate pairs is going to be 1, 3. Again, so crucial that you remember that that x value, yeah, is always first. Always first. Now, we have to complete this chart here, obviously, because we have some remaining values of x here. So let's go ahead and just kind of make some up here. I don't know. I, I kind of like 5. So if x is 5, yeah, then y would have to be 2 more. It would have to be 7. So we end up with 5, 7. I know. It's easy. I know what you're thinking. I'm reading your mind, you guys. Hey, it's really easy. 2 more is just 12. So it's just 10, 12. Okay, so if x is 15, since that's what I have on our chart, 2 more is going to be 17. And these are some really large numbers. But if we look at the range, you can see that we're good because we got, oh my goodness, goes up the way to 22. So we're okay. Now we need to plot these coordinate pairs onto our coordinate grid. I have one. There's one. And Y is three. Ooh, there you are. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Sorry, just passing the time. I have five coming all the way over here, which is X. I go across horizontal. Oh, you know, I just noticed I don't have my arrows. Let me get that. Kiro and I, I feel like we can continue on with our points. So we have five, and that's come up to seven. So here's five, there's five, plus two more. Here's seven right here. Yep. Now I have 10, and then I have 12. So I'm going to come up here, 10, 11, 12. Ooh, yeah. I like it. And then I come to 15, and I'm going to go all the way up to 15. Whoa. Plus two more, 17. All right. Could that be any easier? I think not. Now I'm going to go ahead and graph that, put in my line. I need a straight edge, right? Well, you guys do. I just need my smart software. And then look at that. Woo-wee, yeah. All right. That's my line. I do see it. And I do see my points on there as well. So that is going to be line L. Yeah. So now let's go ahead and do another line. Let's do line M. Ooh, yeah, we already have our values for line M here. Looks like we have a 0 for X here. We have a 5, and we have a 10, and a 15. Okie dokie. Now, it does say Y is 5 more than X. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Yes, so if X is 0, Y would be 5, and we end up with our coordinate pair of 0, 5. And then we just do, keep doing the same, 5 more. So that's 10. There we go. Yes. Now let's go ahead and plot those points. Okay, so we have 0, 5, 0, 5, put that right there, 5, 10, 5, up to 10, and I'll do the others. Well, that's really interesting. Look at that. Oh, my goodness, those points there? Yeah, this line is right next to the other line. Uh-oh, did I miss? I must have missed a point. 5, 10, aha, I can already see what I did wrong. Yep, you're probably saying, Mr. Wara, you missed it. Yeah, she go right there, huh? So I'm going to do something sneaky here. I'm just going to bring my point up. 
Come up there, buddy. There you go. Woo! You didn't see anything. That's right. You didn't see a thing. Very cool. Second line. We got line L. We got line M. So let's take a look at these here. Let's do part of our learning target, which was to analyze the patterns. So by looking at it, what do you notice about each one of these lines here? You know, if we were to compare these lines L and M, you know, they look very similar. They're parallel. So they look like they go up at the same angle too, don't they? They look like, like they're almost like copies of the same line, except that line M is farther up than line L. Line L was the one below and line M is the one that's above. Understanding that M is farther up than line L, we have to kind of think of it, but farther up from, from what? Okay, well, it looks like we can take line L and shift it up a bit to get to the other one. Each point is a little higher than the points on line L. And the rule for line M is to add five to each X coordinate. So it makes sense that the line will be higher up than line L because line L's rule is to only add two. So you see all the Y coordinates on line M are three units above all the Y coordinates on line L with the same X coordinates. Look at that. We can look at right from right here. Here we have one, three. Okay, and if we count up, you can see that the next is going to be one, two, three. It's three up, three up, three up, going all the way. So it's almost like it's been shifted. Interesting. If we compare the rules for line L and M, what do you notice? Yeah, both rules are adding to the X coordinate. One rule had us add two to the X coordinate and the other had us add five to the X coordinate. We are adding three more to the X coordinates in M than we are to L. That's why all the Y's are three more than the Y's on line L. Ooh, I just love it when it comes together. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Let's add one more line. Let's look at one more table. So line N here says the rule states Y is eight more than X. Now let's compare that rule for line N to the other rules we have seen today, right? Line L and M. Yeah, it's another addition rule, isn't it? We're still adding, but this time, we have to add eight to the X coordinate. The rule for this line adds six more to X than line L and three more to X than line M. We look at those rules. Yeah. So you know what? Let's make a prediction here. What will it look like if we draw line N on this plane? What do you think? Do you think the line's going to be parallel? Do you think it's, yeah, you think it might be another parallel line? I bet line N will be above the other two on the plane. So let's go ahead and generate four points and then we'll go ahead and put that on a plane and let's see if our predictions were correct. Okay, so those are my, I, I actually created four points, four coordinate pairs. Let's go ahead and plot those points on our coordinate plane. Okay, what do we have here? Ooh, looks good. Is this lining up? It is. Oh my goodness, this is going almost off the screen here. I'm going to bring you down a little bit here so you can see my arrow right there on my coordinate pairs. I have another line. Was our prediction correct? I bet you guys are on top of this because you're fifth graders. I know. That's right. You said, hey, I knew it was going to be parallel. And so line N is parallel to the other two lines. So we were right. Yes, line N is above the other two lines as well because we were adding more. So as you can see clearly, line N, whose rule is Y is 8 more than X, creates another parallel line. It's important to understand that concept. So what do you think would happen if we just had a rule Y is 10 more than X. We're starting to see that pattern. We're going to think, yes, it's going to be parallel with that other, the other lines, L, M, and N, and it's going to be above, that's right, it's going to be above line N. So the line for the rule, Y is 10 more than X, would again be parallel. Its Y coordinates would be greater than those for the same X coordinates in the other lines. It's going to be greater. And we can even show about where that line would be. It would be about right here. Nice job. Now let's go on to the next page. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's this here, my beaver friend? What are you doing here? Oh. Hey, sorry. Whew, these future animals are so sensitive. Okay, I know you make dams. I'm not saying you're not a hard worker. My goodness. You're not here to evaluate me, are you? Hope not. No. Oh, I understand. Whoa. That sounds pretty sophisticated, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness. 
This beaver is trying to learn some important graphing solutions and rules so that he can help design his dam. And I thought math was just for kids, you know? It's for beavers too. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, you busy as a beaver. I think you need to kind of <laughs> go back to work, okay? All right, or, or, or watch the math video, like, I don't know, somewhere else maybe? Our rule states y is x times 2. That's right. So if x is 2, then y is 4. Yes. And this is true because if x is 2, y must be 4 because 2 times 2 is 4. I just multiplied 2 times 2 and got 4 as my y coordinate. Great. Now let's complete this chart for the x values of 0, 1, 3, and 4. So we'll put those in there. 0, 1, 3, and 4. And you could put the video on pause and then go ahead and do this on your own. This is a great way to see that you're on the right path. Now hopefully your table looks something like that for line P. Now let's go ahead and plot each coordinate pair on the plane. And we're going to use that straight edge, right? Never going to do this by hand to draw line P. So zero, zero is down here. I have one, two. I have three, three, six. And also I have four, eight. Be one steep line there. Let's get that line in. Now I have line P. Now let's go ahead and look at creating another one with line Q. So I want you to use these values for line Q. Let's make X zero x1, x3, and x4. If you want to put the video on pause, you can hold it up. Say, hold your horses, Mr. Wara. I would like to go ahead and try on my own. Okay, that's cool. Okay, my y coordinate is going to be 0 because, of course, 0 times 3 is 0. 1, that's just going to make that 3 because if x is 1 and you multiply it by 3, you get 3, and then you take 3. And of course, we're going to take the times 3. Whoa, that's going to jump way up there. That's going to be a 9. 4 times 3 is 12. So I have all my ordered pair. Cool. Now let's go ahead and plot those points. Oh, it's going right on top of that other point, 0, 0. I have 1, 3. Whoa. That's so close. And then we have 3, 9. Okay, so here's 3. Jump all the way up to 9 right here. That's interesting what this one's going to do. Now I have 4 all the way up to 12. There we go. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so I have my four points. That's going to be one interesting line. Wow, let's compare. Let's compare the rules here for lines P and Q. We have Y is X times 2, and then line Q was Y is X times 3. Ooh, that's right. They're, they're both multiplication rules. The last time we did some lines, they were addition rules. These are multiplication rules. They're a little different because, look, P is multiplied by 2, and Q is multiplied by by three. Now do lines P and Q, do they intersect? Yes, they do. They actually do intersect. I know you're thinking, but they don't. But they only intersect at one point. That's right. The origin, zero, zero. They do intersect there. Now, so you compare lines P and Q in terms of their steepness. And what do you notice about their steepness? They both seem to start at the origin, but you can see line Q starts going up really quickly. Okay. It's steeper than line P, but line P goes up more gradually than line Q. So line P is less steep, we would say. Now you may notice that then line Q is steeper than line P. Okay, so we made that point. If you look again at the rules for these lines and at the coordinate pairs that we generated for each line, I wonder if we can explain why line Q is steeper than line P. Why is that? I mean, we used the same values for the x coordinates, didn't we? But when we multiplied them, we multiplied them by different numbers to get the y coordinate. See, I think line Q is steeper because we tripled the x coordinate rather than doubling it as we did in line P. Remember, in line P it was multiplied by 2, whereas with Q it was multiplied by 3. So we tripled it as opposed to doubled it. So the y coordinate gets higher faster when you triple it, even though we, we, we use the exact same values, so we know that's what happened. Now let's go ahead and do one more, line r. And what we're going to do is let's do this rule here. So let's put in these values for x. We'll put in 0, 3, how about 4, and you know, I probably would want to put 2 in there. Let's just put 2 in there too. Even though they're out of order, that's okay. So if it's going to be x times 5, so y is x times 5, that's our rule for line r. Well, 0 times 5 is 0, 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20, and 2 times 5 is 10. We can put all those listed this way for coordinate pairs. If you want to make sure that you have a better chance of graphing an accurate 
line, then you want to make sure that you adhere to that x, y ordered pair. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot those points. Okay, again, we had 0, 0 down here. Okay, that's like the third point at the origin. We have 3, 15. Here's 3 all the way up to 15. Then we have 4, 20. So here's 20, here's 4. I also went back and did 2 and then to 10. And here's 10, and that looks like 2 right there. Okay, now let's go ahead and you're going to, need to get your straight edge. I'm just going to take one of my lines again here. Oh my goodness, look at this. Wow, that is line R, my friends. Now we can go ahead and see, again, this rule, rule for line R. Yeah, that rule says it's another multiplication rule. We're still multiplying. Yes, I think it's going to get even steeper because, again, we're multiplying by 5 when we were tripling it. And now we're multiplying by 5 and even increasing that. So sure enough, it is steeper, and you can see that by the line. So something to understand, definitely is it the rule y is x times 5. It passes through the origin just like the other lines did, but this time it went even steeper. It would be logical then to reason mathematically that y is x times 6 would look even steeper, wouldn't it? The numbers would even, we'd keep moving to the left. So what sort of multiplication rule could we use to produce a line that was not as steep as line P? Yeah, wouldn't we need to multiply the x-coordinate by something less than 2? And wouldn't that make that line fall a little bit below, making it a little less steep than line P? Woo! My goodness, my friends, that was one fascinating lesson. I must say. And I'm happy that our friend over there, Mr. Beaver, was hanging around. Yes, and hopefully he's going to be able to put these, he's going to use all these mathematics to make his dam more efficient. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, oh, you heard me? Okay, I tried to whisper. Anyway, my friend, it is time. It is. Don't cry. You know, there will be another video very soon. I know there will be. Now, live long and